but the reason I want, I wanted to do with my iPad so that I could show you some of the things. Let me, um, I, I, we got one, two, three, four, five. We got what, about 12, 13 people? Yes. Okay. So um, basically, let me just give you a little bit about my background and then um, that'll help you. I know a couple of you. I saw Bill Green on, on, the, on the list there and, um, and a couple others. Um, so my, my background is really a tax accountant of all things. I retired about four years ago and I started taking a couple of classes at um, Thompson Park with Gina Torello is probably a well-known name. Um, with that, um, I didn't really have like an art style or, or system. Um, and I think each one of us uh, approaches our art a little bit different. So um, I was all over the place. I did pencil, um, I did acrylics, I did pastels, I did oils. And now I've um, settled down into what I think is a pretty good system, at least for me. I don't know about everybody else, but it's a combination of um, drawing skills and um, mixing skills with, with, with the paints. And um, when I took these classes with various teachers, I found that they knew what they were doing and I had a tough time kind of absorbing it, particularly with the mixing skills. I don't know if there, anybody has had the same problems because they would just put a little dab of this, a little dab of that, and then come up with a color that they want. Um, so I had a difficult time dealing with that because uh, my colors always seemed to be off and they didn't look like the natural colors. So uh, what I began to do is I, I, I started taking some YouTube videos and I'm gonna show you a couple of applications that I find I use in my daily art projects. And, and the reason I, I do it is because it just takes some of the guessing out. So I have this kind of um, theory since I didn't come from an art background that I don't wanna reinvent the wheel. So if somebody else has done it or there's an application to help me do it, I would rather try to follow that, see if it works for me. And then I don't have to experiment as much. So um, I have a, a PowerPoint and uh, Susan, I'll send it out to the group after the presentation. Uh, they can focus in on what I'm saying, opposed to kind of taking notes and, and reading. And, and you're welcome to give me a call or whatever. I'll, I'll give you my email and uh, phone number at the end of this, because I think the idea of sharing it is one of the things that intrigued me about doing this presentation. And I thank Karen for inviting me. Um, okay, so basically, um, we're, we're all walking around with the iPhone. And when I first took a, a, a class, we learned um, perspective, you know, like if, if an object is further away and the vanishing point and how to draw to that. And I found um, two things really important in my oil paintings. The first thing was that if I could get the proportions correct, that everything looks like it's in proportion, whether it's the body of somebody and somebody's further back, it's a little bit smaller, but it, it's going towards the horizon. And if I can get that correct, I could get the portions correct. I'm on my way to get a, a good foundation for my oil painting. And I'm gonna basically talk about oil painting. So that was my first criteria is, can I be a better artist by drawing a better picture to begin with? And that'll be my framework that I'll work within. And then the second thing is, how do I get the damn colors to look like um, the natural, like if you did plain air, that, you know, my greens might be too 
too bright. And it's not what I'm seeing, but that's what I'm mixing. And I can't seem to get it perfect. And, and so now I, I, I think I have a system down that certainly helps me. And I'll take any questions at, at the end of the presentation. I, I assume we have about an hour. Yes. Okay. Take what you want. Yep. So let me turn over to the presentation and then Susan, I'll forward this on to you and you can forward it to the group. Okay. Yep. Um, but I'll do it at the end of this. Um, so let me see if I can bring it up, share content. Uh, Microsoft SharePoint. No, OneDrive. Okay. Uh, it's not coming up. You see my screen? Yes, it's a. There's a picture of somebody with their thumb up by water. No, that's not what I want to show. Ah. I'm back here. Screen. Okay. Screen broadcast, I think. Start broadcast. Nope, that's on it. Uh, I'm having a difficult time trying to get my meeting settings. You know what? I, I'm going to get on to another computer. Maybe that'll help me. Hold on, guys. Sorry about that. That's okay. Recording in progress. Okay. I think I gotta turn the sound off. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, I'm I'm going to try to calm you on. Can you still see me? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, share screen. Um, Okay. Can you see the screen? We see you. How about the screen? Um, no, I don't see it. Um, if you. Okay. This. Okay, share. All right. There you go. 
There you go. You see okay. And you still see me too, right? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Sorry about that. All right. So let's start at the very beginning. Okay. So um, th there's a bunch of apps that are um, made for your phone, but they're also made for your computer. I just switched from my iPad to my computer. I should have stayed on the computer. I thought I could show you more on the um, iPad, but we'll just work with this. So one of the things um, that you have to do to get the colors right is to, to look at the grayscales. You know, like how dark are you gonna make the red or how light are you gonna make the red is an important uh, function in this process. Um, so there's, a, there's something I think most of us do and if we don't do it, I know that um, some of the classes I took, uh, they talked about it, is to take the picture, even if you're, you know, in plain air, take a picture of what you're looking at and put it on your iPhone or your iPad and then convert it to black and white. The reason you change it to black and white is because you're going to see all the different grayscales. And if you could get the grayscales correct, um, you're on your way of kind of getting the picture correct. So there's a program basically on all iPhones that once you take a picture, you could switch it to black and white. So here's a picture that I um, actually, that I really, really liked. Um, it was a, a scene from Vermont of a covered bridge. And let me see if I can get it a little bit bigger. Is it small or is it big enough to see? Um, I think we can see it. Okay. Should I make it bigger? Let me see if I can. Um, view. Uh, Pretty much close. Okay. All right. So I'll just zoom full screen. Let me try full screen. It's a little better, I think. Okay. So um, if, if you're not taking a picture, the other thing you can do is a screenshot. So there is uh, virtually unlimited things on the internet that are, in my opinion, inspiring. Since I ski, um, this kind of reminded me of the covered bridges I see in Vermont. So the first thing I did is I said, okay, I want to take this picture and it's on the internet, but I want to kind of move it around and put it on my iPad and things like that and put it next to my sketch pad or my canvas. So I have to have it mobile. So I use my iPad. So I took a snapshot of my screen and there's different ways to do it depending on Microsoft or Apple. And then the first thing I did, do you guys see the cursor too? Yes. Okay. So the first thing I, I began to realize and it, it hits you a little bit um, stronger when you convert it to black and white is that even though there's red in here, I'm not focusing in on the red, I'm focusing in on the white and that, that red is contrasted against the shadows of a tree that's probably over to the far right. So I began to see that, okay, listen, uh, you know, the sky is dark, but those little white lines is there's some snow on it. And I think you mix, your mind kind of wanders when you're looking at colors as to, you know, what color is it? Um, how dark is that color? But dealing with the black and white um, was my first step in my process now with just about anything I do. Um, and here's kind of, um, they give us in art classes, um, you probably have seen it, these grayscales and value finder that you take these grayscales and then figure out over here, is it the darkest spot? And on this, the darkest spot appears to be 
um, I'd say the door of the car, underneath the bridge, um, a little bit of the stream over here, and then of course the the lines and the trees. So now I kind of got a, an idea that I need to make the darkest spots the darkest. And the sky, if you look at the sky here, there's some dark on the top, then it gets lighted. And then it's lit over here a little bit because the, the light source is coming from this side. So now I got kind of in my mind just studying it that, okay, here's kind of the grayscales. It's kind of maybe like uh, halfway for the sky, maybe a little darker in some spots in the sky as you get into a cloud or something like that. And even some white, uh, some white puffy clouds. So I'm not focusing on this side, I'm focusing on this side. So then the next step, I have to do is, um, and, and remember what I said at the beginning, is that in order to get this right and to make it kind of appear that it's going towards the horizon is that, uh, and, and get the proportions correct, um, a lot of the art classes I've seen is they take <clears throat> a grid and they actually hold it up and put it on the picture. But you can do it with the computer. So basically what you could wind up doing is getting this app, it's called Artist Grid Tool for Drawings. And you can take any picture that you have in your photo album and you can put it into this app. And as a result of putting it into the app, I've broken this down into one, two, three, four, five, six quadrants. So if you look at the peak of the, um, the covered bridge, it's in this quadrant between one and two, about halfway up. And if you look and follow that line down, uh, I hope everybody's seeing, you see the arrow? Yes. Okay, good that if I come just below the third quadrant into the sixth quadrant here, this would be in the six where these bright Christmas trees are uh, that are lit up. I'm gonna have that bridge pretty much in proportion to the, uh, to the vanishing line. And it's not gonna look awkward because before you start painting, you wanna get, remember what I said is, the, the contrast between the, the dark and the light, and you also want to get your proportions correct. So if you, 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 you look down here between the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant, the car is pretty much sitting in that quadrant there. And so basically what you do is say, okay, listen, I'm going to sketch this out but I'm gonna make sure that the car is in that quadrant or there. Now you could change the six quadrants into eight quadrants or 32 quadrants or two quadrants or four quadrants. I chose six because it gets too detailed when you do like 32 um, and it's simpler. So this program called Artist Grid Tool is a free app. That's always good. Um, and helps me kind of figure out where am I gonna put the bridge? Where am I gonna put the car? And if you look closely over here, there's a yellow house, but it's so far in the distance and it's only sitting in that sixth quadrant that I've, I've done it myself where I put the distant house into my picture, but it looks like it's closer than the bridge because I made it too big. So here I am now saying, okay, listen, if I could get the proportions correct and that house is that distance apart and is that small and there's like a front yard here with snow, I'm going to be in pretty good shape before I start painting. Does that all make sense to everybody? I mean, just give me a thumbs up or, okay, okay. 
All right. So the, I'm going to send this out, but um, I would recommend getting this artist grid tool for drawing. I'm going to go back to the iPad later because I could actually do a live demonstration and take any picture and do the same thing with it. But I wanted to show you this. Okay, so that's one. So now um, I, I took a, a program. There's, there's a program called um, Photo to Sketch. I don't have it there, but if you're not sure of, you know, are my major lines in proportion to where it needs to be, and you don't like using the grid, then get this other program called Photo to Sketch. So basically what it does, it takes whatever photo you, you take and whether it's a person, a scenery, a still life or anything, and it converts it to a sketch for you. Now you have a reference point of saying, okay, listen, if I just did the outline and I did it correct, the proportions would be okay. And once you got the proportions okay, then you could start sketching. So I use this as kind of a, I guess a check against my grid app. So my first step is turn it to black and white. The second step is take the grid, make sure your proportions are correct. Then I do this smartphone kind of photo to sketch, which is this program here, you'll see. And again, it's free. And I just use that as kind of a sanity check. All right, putting that aside, going back to the gray, I start putting in my background, as we all know, because all of us do some art, you, you're working from the background forward. So um, I, I begin to see that there's some darker areas and there's some lighter areas in the sky. And roughly, if you see here where I'm circling, I know the house is sitting back there, but I'm not too worried about it because it's, it's so far in the background that if, even if you screw it up, all you have to do is get kind of the outline and the proportion correct. And when the eye looks at it, they'll say, oh, that's a house far in the background. The center of attraction is really uh, the foreground particularly the, um, the bridge and, and the car, the, the old car, the old red car. So I begin to do just kind of the rough uh, coloring of the background. Now, obviously the snow is, is, is white, but I'm putting in a gray sky and I'm just covering an undercoat to get it. I know my bridge is correct, because I did the grid line and it's pretty much looks like it's fading into the background. And so I'm happy with that. And I think the grid line helped me and it's pretty easy to use. Okay. So now this is the original sketch. And on the left, there is a program and this is the third program that I, I, I think you should toy with uh, just to get an idea. It's called R Paint Light. And again, it's free. Um, so it's pretty good. And basically what I said at the very, very beginning was that, listen, if you could get the proportions correct, right? And then you can get the coloring correct or close enough where you're happy with it, okay? And it doesn't look like an artificial red. It doesn't look like um, something that is cartoonish. It looks closer to the background. So the picture on the on the left is the um, is the photo that I was using as my guide. The picture on the right is my painting. Now I didn't get the reds perfect, but I wanted to show the, the shadows really stronger than here. So I made a conscious decision to make the reds lighter so that the shadows show even better. I'm looking at this picture and 
I don't like the the car eventually, but eventually I'm going to get rid of the the original, and people are not going to see this at all, right? They're not going to see what I used as a model. They're only going to see what I painted, right? So after I put in the trees, because the trees were easy to put in, just a bunch of either dark lines or some white lines, because they're uh, either a birch tree or they're covered with snow. Um, and then once I did that, I had that rough drawing over here, if you remember right here of the house. I started putting in the house with a very fine brush. And if you take a look at the house, you really get the sense that it's sitting way, way, way in the background. And um, that it looks like it's starting to get dark. The yellow uh, brings out the lighting in the house but your eye will focus on the car, the bridge, and then the house in the background. But I think the house helps the bridge look closer and the car look more real. Um, obviously the house is smaller than the car because the distance is away. Then one thing that I, I thought really made this thing pop was two things. One is the, um, the Christmas lights. So I put a lot of white in there for the snow, but I also took my, um, I think it was um, a marine blue or a very light blue and put a lot of uh, white in it. And then I went to this other program called Our Paint Light to kind of have it pop a little bit better than just merely adding white. So um, is everybody with me? Does it make sense what I do? It doesn't, it's really not complicated because once you get this process down, you would just put the iPad next to your painting and then just keep using it as a guide. That's like the same thing as putting a picture and taping it next to your easel, but instead you're gonna use an iPad. And there you'll be able to manipulate it a little better and to see what you wanna see. Now this, this program here called Our Paint Light is really, really cool. I don't know if everybody's had the same problem as me, but I watch a, a really good artist and say, I have to put a little green in there. And I'm like, why? You know, like you're trying to get a yellow, putting a green in and then put a blue in and somehow they come up to the, the color that they want, but it takes years of practice. Um, I didn't want to wait years. So I, 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 I fooled around with this program called Our Paint and I'm going to spend some time here because this is just a facsimile of what you see. So the first step in our paint is you bring the original picture in, into the software. So you bring it in. So this is, this picture here, where the cursor is, is clicking here where this black line is and importing this picture into this software. Is everybody with me? So basically it just goes to your iPhone, your photos and brings it in and puts it into this app. And it's really simple. You just click here, it opens up your iPhone app and now you're in the program and this program is now got the Vermont uh, scene in it. If you look here where the red line is, there's a crosshair right here. And you see this color? That's that color exactly, okay? So you can move that crosshair and move it around. And as you move it, the computer or this app is really figuring out how to get that color as to which 
colors you need to mix in order to get it perfect. Okay, so I picked here for demonstration purposes, um, the covered bridge, a little plank in the bridge, so to speak, and the crosshairs here. So step two is just position the point of where you want it. Step three, and this is exactly what you would do, there's a paintbrush down here. You could see it a little better over here. So you click on that and it brings up this second screen. And basically what the program is telling you is that, hey, you wanna get this color. In order to get that color, you have to mix 57% red, 31% black. Now I would have never added any green. Just a little dab of green, 7% and a little blue. If you do it fairly close by eye and you'll know where you're off, you'll get that color there. Now, if you move the cursor to, let's say where the shadow of the tree is hitting the bridge, you probably would add more black. Sometimes it kind of confuses me. It, it, you add more green or blue, depending on the picture that you're looking at. But what's really nice about it is that you don't have to play with the colors. You have kind of a template to the extent of your mixing and take your palette knife, and some people like to, to adjust the colors with their brush. I like doing it with the palette knife because I can make a couple of different colors on the palette and then figure where, where I wanna put it on the bridge. So basically this program to me, together with the first one, getting the grid, getting the portions correct, now doing the background, we all can do this. I mean, I think this is not that hard. Um, and then taking this R paint light and moving it around to see the color, virtually what I wind up doing is flipping between this screen and this screen in order to get the color I want and my palette and then going from that point on. I'm gonna stop for a minute. Um, maybe we could open it up to questions and then I could maybe try to show you a live demonstrations to that effect. But this, I, um, oh, can you guys see me? Uh, Susan? Yes. Okay. So this is the painting. I had it framed. I guess there's a lot of different things going on. Lights. Is that better? I'm pretty satisfied with it. And I think I would have had a really, really difficult time getting to this point without the software. And I do this now on kind of a regular basis. Um, I try to get the proportions correct with the first step with the grid um, here. Once I'm happy with a basic drawing, then I put the background in using that black and white to convert it a little bit and just putting the background in. Then go into this R paint and then mixing according to what they're recommending. And of course, I mean, if you don't like the color in the original drawing that you're copying from or from the photograph, you can change it and make it a little different, but it really does give you an idea where to go. So let me see if I got an example too. Okay, 
Yeah, I think I have another example. Well, why don't I take uh, some questions before I, I go to example two? Any questions? I think we're all just absorbing what you're saying. Okay. Okay. I, I, um, okay. So, go I ahead. A, this is Karen. Hi. I noticed on the R paint we did for color mixing. Uh huh. The chart where it had the chart of colors. You're right. Those are very basic colors. It doesn't get into like you would use a, a you know, a, I can't come up with an exact color. Like secondary color, Ultra, like ultramarine or right. Naples red, yellow, or you know, it doesn't do those at that level. It does it at a pretty basic, at a primary level, a primary color level, I guess. Yeah. Although the yeah. green was pretty light. Yeah. Um, th th this program, I haven't fooled around with it, yeah, but yeah. you could designate. Um, different palettes. So you could have a complex palette where you have the ultramarines and other colors, or yeah. you could just do a blue. I use the basic because yeah. um, I find I can get to just about anything I wanted. I don't want to complicate my life even further. Yeah. So you um, there is a switch on here, and I don't remember where, but we're going to, I think it's right here, where okay. you can actually change the palette. It's, it, this is six color palette. One, two, three, four, five, six, no, seven. Um, one of seven. Oh, okay. okay. You could change the palette okay. and it'll get more complex, but I, I, I'm just amazed that they're able to figure out what to mix in order to get pretty close to where you want to be. Yeah, no, that's uh, helpful. Very yeah. helpful. Yeah. But if you had a, if, if you had a, a, a hmm, I guess if you had a darker green, well, I know what they would do. They would just say put blue and green and. Blue. Right. Yeah. Right. But sometimes it's not intuitive. Like, like I would never in this red think of putting blue or green in it. I would just do the red, maybe the black, and I wouldn't put a touch of green in or blue. Right. Um, and and these proportions change dramatically when you start moving this um, bullseye yeah. over. Yeah, I can see how it'd be very helpful. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to try to do another one. Um, okay, this, this same example was a watercolor, okay? And I'm gonna focus in on the artist's uh, grid tool. And um, actually, uh, this is actually my watercolor, but I, I had copied it I just pull it, pull it in for demonstration purpose. But I had a, I had a picture that I found on the internet of a Brooklyn brownstone. Growing up in Brooklyn, I figured, well, this is an iconic thing that I wanted to draw. I, I didn't save the picture because once I made the, the watercolor, I got rid of it. But I was teaching a class on, on this technique of the artist grid tool. And I wanted to show the class all the different, um, I guess, uh, menu choices within it. So I, I said, okay, step one is, is to bring the file in and you click here. Step two is those grid lines there, there's like a little color palette. Like if I'm painting something, if I'm trying to set up a grid line and the background's yellow, Yellow is not going to work for me to see where I need to be. So you could change it to red or to yellow or to blue, or whatever you want. You could make it thicker. You could make it thinner. So you could kind of play with it. And again, I, I like the six. But what I began to realize, which sometimes your eye won't pick it up immediately, is that the door of this um, brownstone 
is almost a little above the fifth and sixth quadrant, but the window is smack in the middle. And I, I know a lot of times I was a little off because I didn't trace the line all the way up and, and so on. But this is actually my watercolor. And it came out really pretty cool because I was able to take the original picture. And this is my watercolor. It's not the original picture, but I was just trying to do it. And then um, you could change the thickness of the, the lines like you want to see it a little bit better. Um, and then you can change the colors of the grid. See, like over here, I changed it to purple just to demonstrate. And so what I would do, it, or is that a hot pink? I would, you would just click here on that color and it would change all the lines. Now this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So this is a grid of 24 if you wanted a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. You can move these lines over. And again, if you really want to make it simple, if you just take a quadrant and, and draw that kind of duplicated, on your sketch pad, you're, go, you're gonna have, when you put all the quadrants together, everything in, in perfect proportion. And again, it, it helps you with like where to set the windowsill, where to set the top of the ornament that's above the window, where to set the roof line. And so sometimes what I do is I use that, that six quadrant thing but then I want to see, you know, how big to make that esophagus over here, this green part. Mm -hmm. And so I'll actually change it midstream. I don't want to complicate things, but it's really simple to do. All you have to do is say, you know, 6, 8, 16, 32, whatever you want. So this grid line thing is, is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Here's a... Okay, here's another thing that I, I wanted to show, and I, I think it's good. Uh, this is that photo to sketch. And what I try to do is do a couple of examples so you guys would get a, a feeling for this. And again, don't worry about, you know, taking notes or whatever, because I'm going to send Susan this and she could distribute it. You guys are welcome to it. But I was in um, Portugal and I thought it was pretty cool, um, the trolley. But there was a lot going on, but all I wanted to do was kind of capture the essence of it. I didn't, I wasn't going to paint it, I was going to just draw it. So um, I just wanted to make sure that I had things like proportionally correct. So here's the photo I took when I was in Lisbon. Okay, right here. And then I put it into photo, photo by, uh, to sketch. And then this is it here, but then I took an extra step and I put it into the grid because I not only didn't want to see the outline of what the sketch would look like, okay? I also wanted to see proportionally if I was gonna draw this, where is the middle of the train and how much of the Thank train? You. And it's pretty cool because it, 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 it highlights the building in the back. And again, you could see kind of the building fading away because it's heading towards the horizon, which is back here somewhere. And so I wound up spending a lot of time um, and it came out pretty cool. And I don't think I would have noticed it here, um, putting the cobblestones in. And the picture looked really cool because when I put it into this sketch mode, the cobblestones come out a little yeah, bit Yeah, better. I see that. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, if you look closely, you could actually see through the windows of the trolley to the horizon in the background. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's a little bit missing here because the the grid line gets in the way. But again, I just take it out of the I take it out of the grid program. I put it back into the photo to sketch program, and then I actually kind of look through it and I I keep the horizon straight. So the building is going towards the horizon. Here's the horizon here. It actually is midway through the window. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of felt that it's, it's almost analyzing what I'm trying to do, but it's helping me. Mm -hmm. I don't have to figure everything out. It mm -hmm. figured it out for me. Now, I don't know, to me, some people said to me, I explained, they said, well, that's kind of cheating. I said, no, it's not. No, yeah, it's not, because you could have drew the lines yourself, too. Right. I, 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 I kind of feel that, listen, it's a tool. I'm doing everything myself. The color mixing, the proportions, I have the liberty to change it. I mean, I could, I could put two trolleys there and have one trolley, you know, in my photo, but... I could put a trolley behind it, or I could put, you know, anything I want. So that's that. Um, I want to, okay, I'm going to do this one too, because I think this one is pretty cool. So when you, if you, if you decide to try this, when you get the R paint, um, this is a famous painting. Um, I forgot who did it. Veneer. Veneer. <laughs> okay. So basically to do skin tones, it's not the <laughs> easiest thing to do. Um, so they use this, um, this painting as a guide. It's already set up in the program. So you don't have to import anything, but I just played around with, um, with the crosshairs here and I moved it on her face. And clearly the, the light source is coming from the left to right because anything on the far right near her ear um, is darker. So then as you move the cursor or the, the, um, the crosshairs, the colors up here will change. And you could actually see that it, to me, it's not intuitive. Okay, I, I could see the red, this, uh, the, this light blue and green and white. I would do red, white, maybe a little yellow. They don't even use the yellow. So to me, it, it, it also helped me with the idea of mixing did, listen, I don't know if there's a right way or a wrong way, but I think certain artists can get to the color they want by having a deep understanding of how colors are put together. And they, they see that, let's say that blue in her face. I don't see it. And I, I had a, a difficult time doing it and I don't wanna waste my paints because they're not cheap. So I said, okay, listen, this, this is pretty cool because I could just move the, the cursor from here to the top of her nose and all of these proportions will change. So instead of, what is that? Uh, it's a little cut off. It's like 55%, 18%, 15% and 7%. Those proportions will move on you as you get closer to uh, her nose, her forehead. Mm -hmm. um, and then you got to deal with her lips too, right? Um, so, you know, maybe the red will stay more red with a little white, but who knows, they might put a little purple in. I don't, I don't know. So I don't know how I'm doing on time. I think it's about seven four, 7.53. We lost a couple of minutes there, but I, I, I really felt that, go ahead. I just said, you're fine. Okay. I, I really felt that these couple of programs, and I experimented with a lot of them, a lot of different ones. 
they were number one, the easiest, they were the cheapest, they're free. They were very, very helpful to me. Um, and I now have adopted it in anything I start. In fact, if you take a look at some of my stuff, let me see if I can get out of this. Let me see my photos. Hi, Jacqueline. <laughs> um, I don't know if I kept them all. Uh, let me see if I did it. Uh, here, here's a good example. Green. Um, a couple that I, uh, my son actually knows, um, got engaged under the Bradley Beach gazebo. And um, I found a picture similar to this on the internet, but I, I, I wanted to make sure that I kind of got the feel of like an octagon and also with the background. So first thing I did is change it to black and white so I could see everything. The, the next thing is that is I put it in the grid line. And it was more to the right than centered. And I think it gives a nice effect off to the side. So I was happy with that. Then I started playing around with, okay, where is the top of the gazebo? And where is the bottom of the gazebo? Let me see. Okay. So the program actually did this for me. You, you actually see my writing? The red lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then I said, okay, listen, the top of the gazebo is, is just about here. And, and it kind of jets out this way. And it jets out this way. But these lines are a little bit slanted. They're not, you know, perfectly straight because you want that effect of it kind of dropping back. And then it, it's towards the end of this quadrant, towards the end of this quadrant. And then this is kind of fading back. And so once I wound up kind of feeling comfortable with the gazebo, I just sketched it in. Then I go over to my paint program and then try to, I mean, the yellow is easy, but this gets tough, um, you know, there could be a little brown in here. There could be a little yellow in here that is coming up through there. Um, I didn't take the pains effort of doing um, the slats uh, in the original picture. It had all the slats, but I, I use the grid. I use the black and white. I use the coloring. And I think proportionately, it's pretty close to the gazebo that's down there. And I wound up not going down there. Um, I just took a picture, the people that were wanted it. Um, she, he actually gave it to his wife for their 10th anniversary. And so she really loved it. So it, it, it meant a lot to me that these kids really liked it. So, but that's basically the process I use. And I've been using it now for a while. And I find it pretty helpful for me. Um, let's see how to get out of this. Okay. All right, I'm just gonna do one more. I didn't erase that. I, I, I'm not gonna figure out how to do it at this point, but let me just show you one more.
This this was one that was a little bit tough. I like it. Again, I, I let me see how to erase this. Uh, it must be a race. Here it is. Okay. This is the, the Brooklyn Bridge. It was kind of a snowy scene, but um, it definitely was a challenge for a couple of reasons. One is the, the whole vanishing point idea. This is a little bit about a year ago, but when I kind of broke it down, let me see if I, I do this again. The lines I know are not straight. Uh, I began to realize that, okay, the top of the bridge is here and then it kind of comes out a little bit and then this pole takes up a big piece of it because it's a lot closer to the eye than that. And then this was really important to get this kind of fading into the arches. Now, once I got that simple drawing down, I kind of felt my proportions were correct. I now have to deal with the colors and um, I had done the background here, all of this in the blue. I feel like John Madden, um, <laughs> but a slight variation. And here's where I kind of deviated from the program. Um, I just wanted kind of to fade the buildings in. So I used a lot of the sky, but just kind of put a little red in here a little brown in here, because I already had it on the palette. <laughs> um, and obviously this follows kind of the horizon line. So I was happy with how that came out. And then of, of course this one is smaller, but I use the coloring to kind of do the sky, do the flooring, do the bridge work, but then took my own liberties in, in putting the buildings in the background um, because the buildings were not in the background. They were more kind of like a grayish color and I wanted it to kind of be like an afterthought. So again, the grid line, the sketch pad and the mixing programs were extremely helpful for me. And whether I'm doing a drawing Oh, yeah. Watercolor or an oil, I use those three programs all the time now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think they help me. Uh, so I'll take any questions and then I'll um, send Susan the PDF file of all of this and then experiment to download the programs. They're free. And, and try it, particularly the mixing. I, I think that that's been really very helpful. Anyway, I'll take any questions. I hope that's helpful that you got something out of it. Do you want to unshare and be front and center again? Okay, yep. Yeah, that I gotta get used to the Zoom. Okay, uh, share. There should be a, a Zoom tool there somewhere. Am I front and center? No. No. Um, you should have a stop. toolbar down there somewhere. Okay, yep. Yep, I have a toolbar. Uh, new share, new share. Oh, to the Zoom, um, to, to the Zoom. It's the camera. The third to the zoom, one. to the zoom, to the zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> <laughs> the third one from the from the right bottom. Third yeah. one, participants. Down mm -hmm. the bottom, we see a trash can, and you see it. You mm -hmm. see a camera, a little blue dot. 
I, yeah, okay. And then it says FaceTime, blur my background, choose a video filter, video settings. Mm. Stop share. Not mine. <laughs> There you hey. go. Hey, hey Anthony. Bill. Uh, hey, Bill. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Da, 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 da. Anthony, that was very good. I very like that. Interesting. Very much. Very interesting. I yeah. didn't know that you could get apps like that that could help you I out. think it's great if you really have a, a, a tough, tough drawing. A tough drawing, a, a really complicated, you know, perspective. And, and yeah. That and, um, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. I, I just want to show you really quickly how easy it is. I'm going to go to that program. Um, this is uh, the program. Um, so I could go over here and I could take a, uh, let me just take any picture. I was, okay. Oops. So I just took a picture. I took, oops. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, you see the um, the cursor. Oops. <laughs> You're hypnotizing me. Yeah. I, I think it's this light. A little bit. Yeah, no, it's an interesting program, Anthony. I downloaded them. Okay. And I could move it. And then when I touch over here, you wow. see, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The red yeah. now. If I move the red over, then that's the orange sky. If I move the red over, you could see how it's changing to a yellow because yeah. the yellow is starting to dominate it. If I move it the other way, you could see that it, it's more of an orange again. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. In, if you, you look know, for a particular color. Yeah, if you move the white up, you're going to get more of a pink. I mm -hmm. could move the yellow up. And I get kind of like a muted orange, you know. Um, I could add blue and see what it would do to it. And it almost makes it a purple. I think part of the thing is uh, my, yeah, maybe that's better. But anyway, so, so basically you just flip back and forth. You go to your, you go to your drawing, I mean, to your photograph. Yeah. Mm. And then just move the crosshairs to where you need to be. And then on the bottom, click on the paintbrush and it switches to the color mixing. Wow. And then you could do the mixing there. So it's just really two buttons. Yeah, That's what yeah. it is. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. And the same goes for the grid. I like the grid because I use a grid. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take here. here. Here's the grid. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a, a fort that was on Hilton Island. Mm -hmm. um, I wish they, they kept Sandy Hook as nice as they kept this fort. But you could see that there's um, 4, 8, 12, 16, uh, 20, 24 grids. So all I have to do is just kind of press the button and now look at the grid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I can just press the button and this is what I usually work yeah, from. I would use something like that too. The, um, does it do the golden ratio, I wonder? Somewhere? No, but you know what? That's a good question. I bet you there's a program that it's does it. There's gotta be a program that does it. Yeah. I just change the color to a black. So I know that the bottom of the fort, we enter the kind of the, the door there. So you could, you, you definitely, again, you, you could do it without the grid. Um, but you could see that the, the fort, if you were going to copy this picture exactly, I like that. that it's on one side. Yeah. And then the light is all the way between yeah. grids four and six. Mm. You want the You're golden out. ratio, you just use a grid of nine, a three by three, and be that three way you'll three, be able yeah. to yeah. get yeah. your... Yeah, that's true, that's, right. Yeah. 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 Or even plein air, you could always have your phone with you, and you know, if you're looking at a scene, and you yeah. don't, of course, have a grid, you could just put one up on the phone. 
Yeah, so okay. so basically this is what I wind up doing is I, I, I put the program on my iPad. Yeah. I take my iPad and I put it on my palette. I mean, on my um, easel. And then I put my um, canvas there. And then I just use that as my reference as I'm doing the sketching. Mm, yeah. And then, you know, I could I could kind of play with it when I... I'm not in my room, so to speak, and I want to see if I move the colors around what it would look like. I get an instantaneous, um, you know, reaction from what colors are mixed and what it would look like. Um, again, I, I, I think, you know, each artist does it a little different. Um, but I found that these couple of programs, basically three, are so helpful for just about anything I do now, whether it's a sketch, uh, a watercolor, um, a painting, um, anything. So I, I wanted to share it because I think it's pretty cool. And um, I usually find that if I share something, somebody will call me up and they'll say, hey, I tried this, have you tried that? And if I hadn't, then I learned something. So that that's really the reason I'm doing this. Well, we thank you for sharing it with us. Yeah, and yeah it was, it was very good, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you, Let me, uh, stop thank you Anthony. I guess. Thank you. Yeah, it was absolutely great. Um, I'm glad you guys liked it. 